the book of Isaiah. We are in Isaiah chapter 3, and we begin our study in verse 1. We will go through verse 6, or I should say um, chapter 4, verse 6. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 1. It says, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. God refers to himself as the Lord of hosts or the Lord Almighty. And that refers to the fact that God is the self-existing one and the one who controls all things. And he's going to control some things here. Verse 2. The mighty man and the man of war. The judge and the prophet. And the prudent and the ancient. The captain of fifty. The honorable man and the counselor. And the skillful craftsman. And the eloquent orator. And so God is saying that he's going to remove all of these people from Israel. He's going to remove all of Israel's leaders. Verse 4. People, well, verse 4 says, And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And what he is saying is that people without wisdom and experience are going to be leading Israel. God's judgment on a nation sometimes comes in the form of unwise leaders. People get what's coming to them. Verse 5. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. And child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thine hand. And that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. The Bible teaches that holiness will bless a nation, but God often judges a sinful people by changing the circumstances in their society, and it's no longer blessed. Good times turn into bad times. Relationships which were once, once strong and right become strained and broken. And these are the results of sin. Verse 8. Verse 8 says, For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord, to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin like Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have, they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, if it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women shall rule over them. O oh, my people, they, unto who, they who lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. And, and we learn from these verses that God will not be mocked. The moral depravity that people uh, live under, that's going to have a negative effect on their personal life and on national life as well. Verse 13, The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and their princes. For ye have, for you, for ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts. And so God speaks to the leaders of his people, and he is not at all pleased with them, because they are hurting his people 
with their wickedness. Verse 16. Verse 16 says, Moreover, the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet, the daughters of God's people were not godly women. They dressed for attention, and they behaved like the heathen. Verse 17. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will uncover their secret parts. So the young women flaunted their appearance, and that's why God is going to remove their beauty. And that's what the scab refers to. Verse 18. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling anklets and their headbands and their crescents like the moon, the pendants and the bracelets and the veils, the headdresses and the amlets, actually armlets, and the sashes and the perfume boxes and the amulets, the rings, the nose rings, and the festival robes, and the mantles, and the cloaks, and the handbags, the hand mirrors, and the linen wrappers, and the turbans, and the veils. God promises to remove all their decorations. You know, their main focus was on how they could attract attention to themselves. And there's nothing wrong with looking good. But when that becomes the most important thing, even more important than God, well, that's when God says, enough. Verse 24, And it shall come to pass, that instead of sweet fragrance, there shall be rottenness, and instead of a girdle, a rope, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of brandy, or excuse me, instead of a robe, a grinding of sackcloth, a girding of sackcloth, and branding instead of beauty. So, <clears throat> lots of bad. They were vain. And their appearance was their God. So God's going to take all the vanity they delight in and exchange it for misery. It says in verse 25, <clears throat> Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. So <clears throat> those who defend the city of Jerusalem will become the prey of their enemies. It's going to go from bad to worse because of their sin. Verse 4. And in that day, seven women shall take a hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So in the day of God's wrath, men are going to be hard to find because so many are going to die. The women will not be able to be picky. They will have to settle for any man that they can get. Verse 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and splendid for those who are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he who is left in Zion and he who remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from its midst by the spirit of justice and by the spirit of burning, God's wrath will remove the wicked, 
and so the few who remain will be amazed at how God blesses them. You know, God knows the difference between the righteous and the unrighteous, and the scripture says in the New Testament that God knows those who belong to him. Verse 5. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of flame the shining of a flaming fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a convert or covert in the storm and from rain so the cloud and the fire they speak of how God blessed his people as they traveled from Egypt to the promised land and the point is this, after God punishes the wicked, he's going to bless and protect his people once again. And we will stop there. And we'll pick it up in chapter 5 next time. Until then, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.